Well, that just leaves one thing, and that's output channel strips, okay? This is an output channel strip. This is output 1, 2, the final stereo out 1, 2 channel strip. And uh, output channel strips are exactly the same as um, the auxiliary bus channel strips, which means that you can't use the highlighted setting slot or the highlighted insert slots and then browse the presets in the library over here. Um, for output channel strips, like with the auxiliary bus channel strips, you have to left click on the setting slot and then you can access the common commands and the library. And um, output channel strips have got the following two library folders. There's one folder called analysis tools and these are all metering solutions. Yeah? And then there's a second folder called mastering and these can contain output channel strips settings that are designed to uh, add gloss and enhance um, a final stereo mix passing through the output channel strip and hence they've got names like broadcast ready um, enhanced deepness um, final ballad master final hip-hop master final rock and pop master etc etc right um, okay so let's add one uh, I'm gonna add this final pop master wide channel strip setting okay there we go, and it's added all these processes and what have you. And the entire mix is passing through all these processes and effects and what have you now, and it sounds like this. 96 degrees in the shade. Okay, not a huge difference, but adding mastering um, effects and glasses is not about making huge radical changes. It's it's usually quite subtle, unless it's a special effect or something. So let's see what this final Pop Master Wide channel strip has added. Okay, at the top there's a gain control. Okay, now that allows you to adjust the gain, in other words, adjust the signal level coming into the final output channel strip. It also allows you to invert the phase of either side uh, you can swap the left right channels and most importantly of all you can sum the mix to mono to check your mix in mono which is very important okay after the gain control there's a multimeter for checking the signal uh, coming into the output channel strip then there's an EQ if you need to tweak the EQ at all and that's followed by a multi compressor Okay, now for beginners, a multi compressor is a more advanced type of compressor that allows you to divide the signal into different frequency bands and then you can apply different amounts of compression and different compression thresholds, etc., to different bands of frequencies, which you adjust the frequency bands with these dividers, you see. Okay, so you can apply different compression to the bass. Uh, and different compression to the mids and the tops etc etc so it's an advanced control compressor so to speak okay after that compressor there's this direction mixer which is applying some stereo spread enhancement to the mix and that's followed by f this limiter at the end of the chain which is used to keep the whole mix under control and make sure the level doesn't go over zero and clip and uh, finally, after the limiter, at the end of the chain, there's another meter for checking everything um, about the signal as it leaves the channel strip after the limiter. Okay, And that's your output channel strip uh, setting. Saving output channel strip settings is exactly the same as any other channel strip setting save. I will tell you to save into the logic library, not the user account library. So. You just go to save channel strip setting as, and we do that same thing of stepping out of the user account library, out of users, Macintosh hard drive, library, application support, logic, this is the logic default library, and then into channel strip settings, and then you can save your modified output channel strip setting into the output channel strip settings folder uh, in whichever of the inner folders you like. Okay, and that's how you save them. Uh, I, uh, I'm saying, you know, just like with all the other channel strip settings, save them into the d default logic library. It's much better to have everything together. But while we're in this logic default uh, library, you'll notice there's this other folder here of 
master channel strip settings, which we've not seen so far. I mean, so far, we, we're looking at output channel strips now. Before that, we looked at bus channel strips, and we looked at instrument and audio track channel strips. But what are these out um, these master channel strip settings? Okay, well, let's have a look at that now. Okay, now, I'm working with a single stereo sound card, stereo in, stereo out, so I can only have a stereo output available to me. That's the maximum amount of outputs I've got. But when you're working in the box, you're always mixing it down to a final stereo output pair, whether or not you've got more outputs available to you. If you do have a sound card with more outputs, Logic will always default to make the first pair of outputs, output one, two, the final stereo output pair, okay? Now, if we just open the mixer, no matter how many output channel strips you're using, because you might be working in the box, in which case you're using a single stereo output channel strip, which is feeding your entire mix out to your left, right speakers, monitors, yeah? Or you might be using multiple output channel strips if you've got a multiple output sound card, and then you might be mixing different things inside Logic to different outputs, sending different things out of the output channel strips out of the outputs of your multiple output sound card and you might be mixing out of the box on a hardware mixer or something. But no matter how many output channel strips you're using, if you're not working in surround there's always this master channel strip and it only has a fader on it. Okay now you can think of this fader as a simple MIDI controller which is basically all it is. This master fader lowers the volume or raises the volume of all signals leaving all output channel strips that are being used but it doesn't affect the fader level okay so it's like a MIDI controller that just lowers the volume of every output that's in use okay like this 96 degrees okay in the shade. so it's just a simple controller it's lowering the volume but not affecting the fader position of any of the outputs and interestingly down here on the uh, transport bar as I move this master fader 96. you can see there's a copy of it down here outside of the mixer that you can quickly use to lower your volume if you want to there's also a dim control as well as a mute in the which just dims the level rather than muting it. Okay. okay, so that's the master channel strip. But if you're not working in surround, it simply works as a controller fader. However, if we switch the mix to surround by changing the channel strip of any of the tracks from a destination of stereo out to surround as the output destination, we're then switching logic into surround mode. Now, as I switch it into surround, watch what happens to these two channel strips. Ready? One, two, three, go. Now, we're now in surround, okay? At least one channel strip in the mix is set to surround. So we've now switched to a surround mix. And now this master channel strip becomes an actual channel strip with a signal passing, you know, all the final signals arriving at that surround mix is arriving at this master fader and this is now the master channel strip for the surround mix so it gains the setting slot at the top and the insert slots and it gains a meter now now this meter by default has got five little meters within it for the five surround parts right the five surround positions or outputs or whatever you want to call it um, by default, Logic works with surrounding 5 to 1, but if you're working in 7 to 1, there'd be 7 little uh, vertical meters, okay? But now, the entire mix is coming to this surround channel strip, this master surround channel strip. 96 degrees okay. In the sh okay, so now we've activated surround. You can now use the setting slot at the top of that master channel strip, and now we can see those master channel strip presets. There they are. Okay, so these are for when you're working in surround. So I'll load one up, like add presence to music here. Yeah? 96 degrees in the shade. Then it's just added all these effects, you know, which are enhancing the presence of the, of the whole mix. Okay. 
Okay, so that's master channel strips. You will only use them if you're working in surround, but um, just to let you know where they are. And that also explains what this master channel strip is and how it differs from the output channel strips. Okay, so I'll put the mix back into stereo and everything goes back how it was before. Okay, so that is output channel strips. Um, everything's the same. You've got your same commands, next, previous, copy, paste, reset, and save as, etc. And uh, if you want to adjust any of the insert effects, you know, you can't use the library over here. Just like with the auxiliary bus channel strips, you have to actually open the GUI of the processor in the slot, and then you can access its presets in its own library dialog, as we showed before. Okay, so that's output channel strips and the master channel strip, and that's your lot apart from one thing which I've been sneakily saving up till the end and you're gonna kick me for this but um, look every time we've gone to change or I mean to save a channel strip setting throughout this tutorial I've done the same procedure save channel strip setting in as and then I've said to you don't save in the in the default user library where logic continually prompts you to save your uh, channel strip settings but step out of users Go Macintosh hard drive, library, application support, and then go to the logic default library and save it into the channel strip setting folders there. So it lives in your library with all the original logic channel strips. And it's quite a long drawn out procedure, this stepping out of the user library and then into the Macintosh hard drive, library, application support, and into the logic default library, okay? Now, but I'm going to admit to you now that there's actually a very, very quick way of doing that but I've been saving it to the end because when I teach I like to repeat things over again so that beginners get it into their heads and by repeatedly showing you that procedure of stepping out of the user account library and then into the default logic account library location you should have got it into your head where this logic default library lives on your hard drive but now that you know that I'm going to show you that actually there's a really easy way of saving your channel strip settings in in the logic library you can do this either in the logic library here or outside in your finder view. All you do is you go to Macintosh hard drive, library, application support. There's the logic default library and inside it all the library folders including channel strip settings. All we do is we drag this logic default library folder across and drop it into places like I've already done there yeah, and let go. You know, and then there'll be this shortcut to the logic default library in your places list. And then when you go to save channel strip setting as, you haven't got to do all that rigmarole of stepping out of your user account and out of users and then into Macintosh hard drive and then into blah, blah, blah. All you do is you just click the logic folder here and you're in the logic default library location already just with one click and then you can save into your channel strip settings folder and you're in the right location look mac hard drive library application support logic channel strip settings so there's a little sneaky trick <laughs> uh, i said you'd kick me but you've got it in your head now where that logic library is haven't you so you know that's how i do it and there you go and i saved that extra tip up till the end Okay, so there you go. That's the end of chapter three. We've, we've looked at the whole relationship between these re the recorder tracks in Logic, the signal flow, the relationship between the recorder tracks, channel strips, and the interaction with the library and everything to do with that. And we've looked at a few other interesting things along the way. So that's the end of chapter three, uh, and I'll be coming back. And next we're going to be looking at the piano roll and the hyper editor, the two main MIDI editors that you use for doing all your... MIDI editing and composition, yeah? Uh, so um, I hope this chapter has been useful and I'll see you soon for chapter four. 96 degrees in the shade 96 degrees in the shade 96 degrees Shit.